Dr. Charles Apoki is a 1984 graduate of the prestigious College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, Nigeria, and a master's degree holder in public administration. He is an ordained clergyman, an international conference speaker in several denominations, and a resource person to different companies and other organizations. He has traveled to several nations in Africa and Europe in the course of his ministerial duties. He organizes World and Wisdom Conference, a capacity-building conference that attracts several pastors, church leaders, and business people from different denominations. He is also the proprietor of Petra Christian Academy, a nursery primary and secondary school in Nigeria. He has been married for several years to his childhood friend, Felicia, and they have four children. He is also an experienced marriage counselor. Ladies and gentlemen, please receive Dr. Charles Apple. of knowledgeable people in public service. As long as semi-illiterates and idiots rule this nation. <laughs> people who we... Don't tell me that we are looking for somebody's certificate there. <laughs> Why do you people like looking for trouble? <laughs> we cannot progress. So I, I, I spoke on out, becoming outstanding yesterday. The power of knowledge. I'll speak on that right now and then becoming financial giants. The average millionaire is getting younger and the skin is getting darker. Then I'm going to speak, uh, I want to introduce this to you, refined by hardship. I didn't have a coat for matriculation. I didn't have a tie. I borrowed the shoes I wore, but I'm here. I'm training children in Europe. I told you my eldest son is practicing orthopedics in Germany. So hardship should not define you, it should refine you. Unstoppable people and then the treasures of wisdom. I have the oil of marriage here. If you are married and you have not read the oil of marriage, you are an apprentice, you know sabi walk. When you read the oil of marriage, you go sabi walk. But if you are not married, don't go and touch it. It's nuclear material leading, so it will kill you if you go and touch it. Now, I was discussing with them in the car because our team is glowing in the dark. Bill Gates and Sister Teresa Mary of Calcutta, who has contributed more to humanity? Somebody will think it is Sister Teresa Mary who won the Nobel Peace Prize for her work in India and started a charitable organization. Sister Teresa Mary's influence was only in India. He did not, she did not come to Nigeria. Bill Gates has been able to influence the whole world. man is most likely to glow out of the dark and even have more wealth than somebody who has passion for humanity who is even righteous and is ignorant. Let me shock you before I move on. When Jesus died on the cross and his side was pierced and blood and water gushed out. You know, blood has the serum and it has the red blood cells. But Jesus' blood is not our own type of blood. It's the blood of God. Because blood does not cross the placental barrier. There is a barrier between the placenta and the blood of the child. The umbilical cord carries blood, uh, nutrients and blood. But when it gets to the placenta... There is a limitation. It reverses to the child. Anything that is transported to the child, like glucose, 
amino acids and whatever, it is by active transport. There's something called cyclic AMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate. It binds to the glucose and transports it across to the, to the baby. Things like oxygen and carbon dioxide will go through by diffusion. So the blood of Jesus was the blood of God. When it hits the ground, by the time it, Jesus had died, it had congealed, separated into water and blood. When he was pierced by the side, and that blood with its thermonuclear power hit the earth, the earth was healed. And the earth had no legal right to hold any righteous person down in the earth. That was why the righteous came out and walked in the streets of Jerusalem. But on the head of Jesus Christ, if you go to John chapter 20, from verse 1 to around verse 10, in verse 6, verse 7, you will see that when Peter entered the empty tomb, it was not really empty. It was empty of the dead Christ. But there, some, there were some relics that were still there. And you need to understand this. If not, you will just remain an ordinary Christian. There was the shroud that was used to wrap Jesus Christ. It's called, there, some people believe, because a photographer called Secondo Pia, some years back, took a picture of the cloth and saw the imprint of a man. Instead of seeing an ordinary cloth, it was like an x-ray. When you look at an x-ray, on the cloth. It was from there that they started changing the picture of Jesus Christ in some photographs that he was not nailed on the palm because the palm cannot sustain the weight of an adult with gravity pulling. He was nailed between the ulna and the radius here at the wrist. And you see, but there was a napkin. You see, that cloth was stained with blood at the hand when a leper was healed they used anointing, they used anointed his hand with blood and oil, anointed his forehead, anointed his feet. So whatever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. The earth had been healed. Any man thinking of ancestral causes on land and all that one is not using his brain. Give the same land to an Indian, he will cultivate it and produce good crops for you. There are more demons in India, but their economy is doing better than our own. If demons are still limiting black people, it's because black people are stupid. They don't use their brains. <laughs> demons don't limit me. I limit them. Because whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. The black man is always looking for an excuse not to progress. What Rodney wrote, uh, how Europe underdeveloped Africa. Didn't Europe underdevelop India? And so we blamed colonial masters. After that, we blamed devil. After that, we blamed the ancestral causes. Then from now, we are blaming our neighbors and blaming uh, whoever. A people who are not ready to use their brains always have excuses to fail. And your generation is going deep into the, 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 this excuse thing. And a lot of pastors are encouraging you to shake your heads and pray as if you have epilepsy without using your brain to think about solving the problems of wherever you are in. Am I still talking to somebody? And so... When Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary, he carried thorns and tissues on his head. And out of the brow of Jesus Christ, blood spilled. And then that napkin that was folded aside was such that you can be a Christian by the sacrifice of the body. But if you do not use your head, that crown of thorns and tissues was such that if you use your head, your soil will not grow thorns and tissues. And it is universal for all human beings, Chinese, unbelievers, Indians, because it was the, for God so loved the world. It didn't say for God so loved the Christians. And so if an Indian uses his head, his brain more than you, he will shine more than you. Did they enter? <laughs> And so, you do not feed again from the sweat of your brow. Because sweat is purified blood. When blood passes through the capillaries under the sweat gland, the sweat is removed. Either for cooling or for detoxification. So, 
If you use your head in this dispensation of Christ, you don't need to sweat before you eat. People sweat for you. A nation that is still very manual, still very analog and non-digitalized, is a nation that is not using their brains. In fact, if you look in this hall now, nearly everything is produced by unbelievers. The microphone by Chinese or Japanese or Koreans, the speakers. In fact, the most expensive things you treasure are not produced by people who are falling under anointing. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> I hope I'm not causing confusion. If you go to the book of Daniel, uh, chapter what now? Daniel, I don't have a good memory. Daniel, <laughs> I wonder how I managed to pass the exams. <laughs> Should I share the secret with you? I don't have a good memory, so I read something over and over and over and over and over again until it's like the road to my bedroom. I know it even in the dark. So, <laughs> verse, verse uh, 3 of Daniel chapter 1. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of the court officials, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of what? Dressing. Huh? Aptitude for every kind of fashion. Aptitude for every kind of music. I was asking somebody who studied political science to define politics. She couldn't define it. Asked her several questions. Then I said, what, which Davido song did you, do you know? He said, I want to love you. <laughs> Mumu. <laughs> Showing aptitude for every kind of learning. Well informed. Quick to understand and qualified to serve in the king's palace. Now, at the end of verse 15, at the end of 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand all visions and dreams and of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them in, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and he found them more equal more equal to, I mean, for none equal to Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To, so they entered the king's service. Now look up. The king demanded for Jewish people. Not so. So they were of the tribe of Israel. Like born again Christians of today. Not so. In the midst of a, 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 an unbelieving nation. But he demanded for those who could have the ability to learn. One problem in the Niger Delta, why we don't have good technicians, why the Yorubas are more of the technicians that repair our things and all that, is that we don't have the ability to learn good things. It is easier for us to shoot gun than to repair an engine. It is not that we are not brilliant, it is your generational defect. The young man left brass, left far in the river. This part of the country was under the eastern region. Some of them entered Kenu for days, got to Yenegua, went to Portacot before going to Enugu to go and write exams, to enter Onsuka, and they did very well. Am I right? Yes. So, it is, and we eat more protein than nearly any part of the southern Nigeria. And so we are naturally intelligent. 
But when intelligence, somebody asks me, are you in Nigeria? I say, yes, in South Africa, in Springs. He say, you are a criminal people. I say, no. I say, criminality is intelligence looking for an avenue for manifestation in the midst of oppression and deprivation. In fact, xenophobia should be directed towards our politicians. Should beat them up when they travel overseas. Because if there are jobs, what are you going to do in South Africa? So you must have the desire and the ability to learn. And then he, everything he specified to enter the service of the king of an unbelieving nation was cerebral knowledge. No wonder the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. So, in your generation, many of you are certified illiterates. You have certificates, but you don't have education. The average graduate in Nigeria today cannot compete globally unless the children of the elite who have gone to very good schools. And that's a dangerous thing. The elite keep training their children, like mine, in elite schools, <laughs> private schools. When you take a child to a nursery school where they pay 350000 a term, you always do not wonder how much the child will earn when he graduates. But the, the, the tragedy is that these children go to the elite schools, go to Harvard, go to Howard, go to Princeton, go to Yale, go to Cambridge. But the tragedy, unless they don't come back here, they will not drive on private roads. They won't go to private markets. These children will have deprived of proper knowledge and who have deprived themselves of proper knowledge will kidnap them in the streets. So we are it's sad. Like my two children. Yeah, very sad. So, until we start emphasizing the importance of relevant knowledge like Costa Rica, as far back as 1896, they declared free and qualitative education and canceled their military. Costa Rica has no army. Today, Costa Rica is exporting brains. So, knowledge. What is knowledge? According to some online definitions, knowledge, these are verifiable, fruitful information that can stand and have stood the test of time. They are realities condensed in statements. Realities condensed in statements. Number two, it's information. It's new awareness. Somebody say new awareness. In addition to what you already know, how many new things, what is the new name for Swaziland? The new name for Swaziland. Even where, where is Swaziland? You say it shares boundary with Switzerland. The king recently changed the name. And I didn't know. And the African qualifiers are one thing. I just saw uh, one country with Swazi something. Ah, which Swazi? I don't know Swazi. I went to Google and I found out that it is the new name of Swaziland. So I have added. When people come to my office, they say they want to know how I have acquired this knowledge. They want to see the books I have read. But the truth of the matter is that every day I add new information to my mind. So new awareness. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 6, Naomi heard that bread had returned to Bethlehem. That was new awareness. She also heard that Boaz was threshing with. That was new awareness. So you must have a, a, a desire to have a new awareness about issues on a daily basis. If not, your generation will outshine you. The next thing is skills. Skills are acquired abilities for specific tasks. So, when you say somebody knows how to drive, it's not just that he drives, he has acquired dexterity. What is wrong? Moody Africa made a dress for me. He just came, he, uh, I, he heard his name on radio when I was preaching. And Moody Africa came for my 60th birthday. He said he was going to take my measurement. 
How many of you know Moody Africa? And I, I posted it on Facebook that Moody said he's coming for my birthday. Somebody called me and said, Moody, that I should stop telling lies at the age of 60. Surprisingly, Moody came. He said, I am Moody. I was shocked. I had never met him. He told me he was coming to take my measurements. Then he whispered in my ears, I've taken the measurement. But he did not use tape to measure me. He said, I used my eyes. And then Moody brought the cloth. He called me. I should come and collect it from somewhere. And me, I wore knickers and a T-shirt and drove to the place. People came out to see who was coming to collect Moody's dress. When I got there, the packet alone. When I opened it, the aroma alone. You know, I lecture entrepreneurship at the Federal University of Petroleum Resources. So I was teaching them on branding and packaging. And I gave them the packet to sniff. <laughs> These people sucked all the aroma. By the time I received it, there was no longer aroma. <laughs> and I, I wore the dress to speak to the Pirates Confraternity. The Pirates Confraternity invited me to speak in their Barracuda Feast. It's only geniuses that speak to them. So, and the Christians were worried. What am I going to do with pirates? Me, only me, I'm a cult. <laughs> only me, I'm a cult. You know, they see my face. Do I look like a gentleman? <laughs> but when I wore the dress, people were just looking at me. Skills. For you to outshine any person in this generation. You must have skills and develop skills. For your husband not to commit adultery, you must have skills. You must know how to step out, baby. You must know how to package yourself. You must know how to shave your armpit, not to have white armpit and with, with yellow hair. Are you still with me here? <laughs> then knowledge is the understanding of the subject matter. I asked somebody, what is linear expansivity? He found it difficult to define. Then I asked him, why is it that bridges have gaps? He still found it difficult to explain. In fact, when I ask people questions nowadays, as I interview graduates, I employ so up to 70-something people, and the majority of them are graduates. When you ask a graduate to define Gay Lussac's law of Geishas volumes, he will answer it in SMS. These shorts, your short messages. I told somebody who studied economics, define, I mean, Nigeria is a monoproduct economy discourse. He just made one statement and stopped. I said, you're a fool. <laughs> and he wanted to argue with me. So an understanding of the subject matter when you make a post on Facebook, Nigerian young people re respond reflexly. If a northerner makes a post, you say, Nama, cow, God punish you with your ogre. You know? <laughs> when they went to raid shop right, they didn't know that the shops were owned by Nigerians. If you burn an MTN mass, it's your people that will not have electric uh, network. There were other options. When Malawi students, Zambian students went onto, onto the streets, they were shouting, no violence, no violence, no violence. And they walked past ShopRite in uh, Lusaka. They didn't burn it. Until a politician has an understanding of politics and development, we cannot improve. When politics is seen as self-aggrandizement, building petrol stations and building hotels, instead of building people, we cannot progress. And when our youth see themselves as egg bay wagers, they will buy egg, buy, the politician is ready to buy AK-47 for you, but his children will not come for campaign with him. Why must your life be based on special assistance? You know they become human beings when they are I will jump many things because my time is fast then. What? <laughs> no, you, you can always, 
I have a one and a half hour CD there. <laughs> Do you know why the in the GRO in Port Harcourt, between where the white people live and where black people live, there's always a field. Anywhere, there's always public space. Worry, the GRO is where the white people live. You will see either golf course, or you see a school, or you see a stadium. Do you know? If you go and read the book, The Dual Mandate, Lord Lugard wrote in 1922 that when a mosquito sucks blood, it cannot fly more than 250 feet. It will fall. So to separate the white people from having malaria from black people, they created space of more than 250 feet so that even if malaria, a mosquito sucks blood, before it flies to the GROA, it don't fall. There are things I know I'm afraid of sharing with people they might not understand. So when you see the golf course and the football field and whatever between GROA and where the poor people live, it was not necessarily apartheid alone. After all, they had servants living in their quarters. It was a malaria prevention strategy. So the white man governed us because they were more technologically advanced. It was the invention of the machine gun and the steam engine that enabled them to conquer us. After all, our fathers built the pyramids of Egypt. After all, Ethiopia defeated Italy in the Battle of Adowa in November 6, 1896. After all, Unziga, Unziga, Queen Unziga of Angola, when he went to speak to the administrator of Angola at that time, the, woman, the man refused to give Queen Unziga a chair. Queen Unziga called one of his servants, and her servants, to kneel down. She sat on top of the man and discussed in Portuguese with the Angolan, Angolan ruler there. Because Nziga, the queen, had skills. She was hunting, she was in the army, she was in the cavalry, and she knew Portuguese, spoke Portuguese. And she felt slighted that you, white man, sitting down there, you don't know more than me. You are not even stronger than me. Look, I'm going to sit on a human being, a man like you. When, his, when her elder brother heard that story, he committed suicide. But Queen Nziga defeated the Portuguese at war. When they buried her, they buried her with a spear and leopard skin. A woman like you. <laughs> when life is centered on her breast and buttocks, her will pull off. God, for, God forgive you if industrial fan does not blow your wig away. <laughs> Even if the wig blows away and there's something in your brain, the breeze cannot blow the brain away. Am I talking to somebody? Now, power in knowledge. It will shock you to know. Let me quickly read this. What is power? Power is the ability to achieve a task. So you must have knowledge that can achieve a task. Power is the ability to influence. It's different from popularity. It's different from wealth. It's different from office. The ability to influence. If I don't know more than you, I cannot influence you. A white man was discussing with me in Autopinia Airport in Bucharest. Was discussing Jesus with me. The first thing he brought was, uh, the, do I know about evolution? I just, I just warned him, I said, my friend, look at me very well. Your skin is whiter than my own, but my brain is whiter than your brain. I asked him, have you heard of Lamarckism? Have you heard of scientific, I mean, uh, have you heard of dematerialization? Then as I, I blew his brain, blew his brain, blew his brain. He said, please let me smoke. I'm not running away from you, but let me smoke. <laughs> then he told me, I have never heard of God in this manner. So, you cannot influence people. What we need in Nigeria, in your generation, because my generation is expiring. If it is possible for your generation to even kill all of us and carry, throw us into the sea. Because my generation is a wicked generation. I went to FGC where I ate chicken. I ate conflicts. I ate Quaker oats. They paid Belemina Obunge of the Redeemed Church. They were in East, um, uh, East Africa, in Perabukasa, Central Africa. 
When they were going home, they paid transport fare for every person going back after going to such good schools. When I was in the university, the person cleaning my room was a Baptist pastor. Cleaning my room. I was living in my own room. But today, you, my lecture theater were air conditioned. But today, you sit on the floor to read. And the same wicked generation send their children overseas while you who carry ballot boxes for them are sitting on the floor here. My generation is wicked. Very wicked. And if you, if you admire us to the detriment of yourselves, then you are fools. You must, you, must, you must compare yourselves with the British children. Compare yourselves with the Indian children. Compare yourselves with the American children. The strides they are making. Have knowledge such that when you as a Nigerian mix with an American, you mix with somebody from any part of the world, your color is not a disadvantage. You can dazzle him and mesmerize him. I was employed to lecture in the university. They didn't do interview for me. I didn't write application. I gave a lecture on financial intelligence and investment options in retirement. And to a cooperative in the university, the VC was there. He said, if I had known this man when I was young, I would have been richer than Dangote. So when they needed somebody to lecture entrepreneurship, they sent for me. A time comes when you, are, when you are knowledgeable, you know what your mates don't know. They sent for you when the king is confused. And I pray that uh, uh, your generation will come. Thank God for marking day of uh, your state. You know he's a worry boy. He grew up in worry. I was with him in the St. Andrew's Cathedral recently. He's somebody cut budget. He said this budget is too big, too inflated. He's a young man. But the problem is that those of us from the Niger Delta, when we get into office, we are worse criminals than my generation. We want to compensate for your mental deficiency, your social backwardness. When good luck Jonathan was in power, some of you were renting hotels and staying in hotels, and your village is still defecating in the water. I know one of your ministers that is broke now because he was wasting his resources and wasting his time. Now, ability to influence and to behave in an expected way. Power also involves authority. Do you know, I told you yesterday that I have never committed adultery. I've been married for 34 years. Never. And I'm not going to do that. Because I need to have the moral authority to correct young people. I need to have the moral authority to set an example for them. I have not done any contract because that's how they used to catch me. The way I preach, they have probed me. SSS, DSS, they have gone to my background to check. They've not found anything. So, if you don't have the moral authority to correct people, you cannot shine. A father called me a few days back. He said, I've been discussing with my madam. My daughter failed. And uh, I've been telling her to promote uh, my daughter. I said, Gasu, are you a graduate? He said, yes. I said, so somebody that failed. You want me to promote that person? You want me to contribute to the destruction of this country? Do you know that that, that child might be the doctor that will treat me in old age? Because doctors today use phone to make diagnosis. When you bring an emergency, instead of them, they don't know it. They are using phone to do diagnosis. And so people walk into hospital in Nigeria. They will send you for so many stupid lab tests because they don't know what they are. They don't know clinical signs and symptoms. Maybe they didn't even go for clinical postings. As a third year, fourth year medical student, I was running clinics in rural areas. By the time I left for youth service, I was doing intestinal anastomosis, doing heniorrhaphis, doing myomectomies, removing fibroids, doing hysterectomies. And so, if your generation is not academically endowed, skill-wise and whatever, you might not be qualified to even boss somebody. 
When the person you are bossing knows more than you, and you can't even preach well, are you still with me here? Quickly. How does knowledge bring power? I will not go into Imam Ali's definition of power. The arrows to unlock the power of knowledge, the types of knowledge you must have. Number one, arrow number one, relevant knowledge. Relevant knowledge. Your knowledge must be relevant to the circumstances. It might be relevant in 2010. It might not be relevant in 2019. Now, in Esther chapter 2, 1 to 18, all the girls were beautiful. All the girls were virgins. All the girls were selected. And they were given treatment. But Queen Esther was given special knowledge by her guy. Her guy is H-E-J, I mean G-A-I. Gave that to only Esther. Gave an information to only Esther. That was why Esther was able to shine, glow in the presence of King Nebuchadnezzar. My, friends, my friend was going to eat pepper soup in Dam Great Hotel in Umuahia. He would travel, go and eat pepper soup, buy it in Kula and bring it to Abba. The wife went to the place and called the girl, who cooks pepper soup here? He says, me. She come. You are going to teach me how to cook your pepper soup. Took her home. Taught her how to cook the pepper soup. She improved on it. Gave it to the husband. The husband said, try. This pepper soup tastes like damn great. But it is better than damn great. Umuaya stopped. He didn't travel there again. My friend was committing adultery. I don't know if I've told you before. Committing adultery. And the wife was these church people that tie her tie to the nose. <laughs> when they wake up early in the morning, I am glad I belong to Jesus. You know when you... <laughs> when you deprive your husband sex at night, and then... Jesus, I love you too much, too much. Excess love. <laughs> Jesus, when you know they see you love and me, when they are the pay our friend, they feed you. Never give me even minimal love. They give somebody when don't die, resurrect them for heaven. They enjoy they excess love. <laughs> Me, you are seeing you have not loved me. It's God you are not seeing you long. I'll tell my wife. He said, I love you, but I know fish one. Let us show it now. If I die and you cry, I will just open the coffin. Now. <laughs> so, my friend, my friend was committing adultery. And the wife went to meet the doctor. Madam, uh, my husband, they committed adultery. Female doctor. Doctor said, they wear tight. He said, no, for our, you know our people, for our shush, eh? you know they wear titled, it's from marine spirits, you see. <laughs> Idiot, you have tailors in marine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, she went to Lagos to see the husband, and she took, the doctor said, buy him, wear him for him. She bought tight. And, she, and there's no ugly woman. It's a matter of packaging and presentation. The woman just wore the tight and was coming out of the bathroom and shaking her particulars. The husband shouted in Urobo, Ena me guala na, ena me guala. He said, now these ones are they look for so. Now them are they look for so. Young girl, you don't know how to walk. You don't know how to talk. They even force you to wear jeans. You are still walking like an elephant. You are dancing shaku shaku with jeans. Who gonna marry you with your? Yeah. Not only you won't go heaven. You go surprised to see Linda Ikeji for heaven. Momo.
Your knowledge must be relevant to your generation. Your knowledge must be relevant to your environment. It must be relevant in achieving set objectives. Your knowledge must be relevant in current times. Acquire current information. Now you must have revolutionary knowledge. Knowledge that will displace what people. You know, before now, everybody was talking about big, big, big. And I came up with the concept of the philosophy of the ant. Of doing small things with great mindset. So I have a small poultry in my compound. Brings three crates of eggs every day. I'm rearing broilers for Christmas. I will sell them. I bought another set of layers. I said, that's small. I do snacks in my canteen. Gives me 30 to 40,000 naira every day. There are some churches that don't get such offerings in Niger Delta because when they are falling under anointing, they hold their pockets so that their money cannot come out. <laughs> I sell plantain chips. Recently, I supplied plantain suckers and banana suckers of 2.5 million plantain suckers. So, I do multiple small things with a great mindset. And when you are driving towards my school, you'll be wondering, where, what are you going to see? The poor, wretched, dirty place. But I've been able to reconstruct that place from water that reaches me here to where you can drive into. So, do small things with great mindset. Don't take anything for granted. Don't wait until you hammer before you start behaving like those and performing like those who have hammered. You see, it is not compulsory that I love what I do. Let me start, let me start, let me take it around. It is not compulsory that I do what I love. But it is mandatory for me to love what I do. If you are a conductor, conduct with excellence. If you are making apple, do, there's a boy selling pure water in Lagos now. He wears suit to sell his pure water. There's a boy selling food at Auch, he's an accountant. With his wheelbarrow, he's well dressed with an apron. He gets more patronage. My PA has a master's degree in solid state physics. He's selling coffee and tea in the morning. And he's doing a business he called Food Matters. He located it near where school buses turn and where there are secondary schools. He's getting patronage. The first day he sold 10,000 naira. And he's going to grow it. He drove the business himself. MSC solid state physics does not fit somebody. Certificate does not, money does not respect certificate. It respects creativity. It is not enough to do the same thing with your mates. Do it with greater excellence, with a greater mindset. Do it in a, in a revolutionary way. I don't com conduct common entrance in my school. I don't. I take every child and do entrance for each child. Others can write in one hour. But if you are going to take three hours and get the same result, I will allow you to do the three hours. I will take you in and then gradually build you so that you can perform like others in future. I took an Ijo girl who couldn't speak English. I demoted her. But today, she speaks English. She does our broadcast. She does moderation. I even brought Quest TV to interview her. She came from one of the Ijo villages. But by taking her as a person and transplanting excellence into her, she has changed. And so I get more admissions than the common entrance people. I was not advertising before now because I reasoned Harvard does not advertise. Cambridge does not advertise. Stanford, they don't advertise. People struggle to enter. Why? Their products. So I said, I will grow my products such that they will be my advert. And so what do I have? I have a member of House of Rep. The son lives with me. Body. I have a 10-year-old child and a job boy who is in SS1. My head boy is 13 now. He passed the exams at the age of 12. We do two exams every 10. So we adopted new approaches to to running schools. The next thing is revelational knowledge. Revelational knowledge. Jesus, Joseph, Jacob, Daniel, 
Paul and every person in the Bible that made great influence, had great influence and shone in the Bible and glowed, had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and had revelational knowledge. Sir, why must black pastors always know where they dig bottles and where they planted something and know who is worrying you without having an insight and developing concepts? Why must all of us be monotonous in the way we pray? Apostolic faith does not take offering. But they are growing. So, when I came here, I was looking at whatever you are doing. Quite new to some of us. Different. You know, when, they, when he was ushering me, I wanted to come up stage already. Now, now my friend tell me, say, no, no go yet. If you are not properly exposed, you come here as a guest preacher, you will mess up. <laughs> Same thing, you go to Humphrey and Rumacast Church. Humphrey and Rumacast Church, they don't fall under anointing. But he's very gifted. No person will come and meet you and complain about problems. The board is dead. If you shout, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and then you start rattling rubbish, the board will be empty because you didn't say anything. His word based assembly. If the churches, the way we are running them in Africa, have not produced change, then we need to change the way we run churches. You need to have new knowledge. Then you need to have rare knowledge. Knowledge. There's a my your classmate, Dr. Reginald Westwedo from Egodo. What he does, only six human beings do it in the whole world. Only six human beings do it in the whole world. So he's treasured by the American society. Rare knowledge. I told you yesterday, if you know what every person knows, you don't know anything. Shaku, 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 shaku. You know all Davido's song. You are a counterfeit. Davido was the original. And so when I read my Bible, I don't read for what people know. I read for rare knowledge in the Bible. When I read, I select rare books and read. Like as I quoted uh, um, uh, Lord Lugard, 1922, about the mosquito thing. Very few people will know it in this country. So, go for rare knowledge. When you go for rare knowledge, you become like diamond. Stones are everywhere. Don't be a stone. Then you must have knowledge that can generate revenue. I'm to, uh, I will speak to a church in, uh, in, in Benin, their global headquarters. I'm going to speak on legacy. Then I said, doctor, can you send the material so that we put it in the bulletin? You don't see Mumu. I'll give you my knowledge. You now put it in the bulletin. Then it will be free. Then when I finish preaching, you say, may the Lord go with you, as if I came with Satan. <laughs> you know, church, church. <laughs> church fellows can be wicked. I was to preach in a, in a church. I nearly called the name of the church. I was, I was to preach in a church. And I didn't go with uh, the big car. Because if that one makes like this, one liter don't go. <laughs> and I know the church is very wicked people. <laughs> so I called my lawyer, bought fuel for him, and uh, he carried me with Camry. Camry would just make them. <laughs> no, I, I didn't even have money to, I, I decided to print material. So, I sold my scrap. I don't throw my scrap away. I, have, I had 10 vehicles. I have nine now. So, all the axles, everything, I gathered them when I... No, you my own. Now, you buy them for me. You know, they marry your old wife. When you marry a new, you knock on old. You knock on, they get problems. Now, they complain. They make you they frustrate sometimes. They use a clean face for... You don't throw it. So, I keep my scrap. And I had a heap. So, I sold for 3200 I sold my plantain 1,200 because in my family, we don't do love with money. 
I want to, my wife had paper in the printing press. I needed to buy the paper from her. If not, she won't give to me. <laughs> because I will hold her accountable if we fail. So she added 300 naira to the paper. And on my motor, I bought from her. Then I printed the message, building enduring family businesses and growing small-scale businesses. The Wicked Church gave me 6,000 naira honorarium. Wicked. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and I borrowed money to buy the fuel down from my principal. So, I, this, they bought materials of 25,000 naira. I now reprinted the material and went to preach to assemblies of God at a civic center. They gathered from all over the country. And I preached the message, the same message. And they bought materials of 350,000 in one hour. I took that same money. I reinvested it. And it has grown. Then one bad boy showed knowledge can come from anywhere. Principles are neutral. It is the owner that corrupts them. So he showed me a publishing system. So I took it. Then in December, I bought materials and printed books of about 2.5 that are worth 2.5 million. But I had scrap. I had the waste paper. So I was looking at the waste paper. I looked at it. I looked at it. Looked at it again. Then I called my secretary. Can we print lecture materials with this? She said, yes. So I printed lecture materials, um, um, entrepreneurship, and the future, breaking your fallow ground, legacy, I carried them, went to Benin, Assemblies of God Church, thousands of men gathered. And I finished preaching. They were nearly tearing the person selling the, the book, his clothes. And I sold books of 750,000 in three days. That means all the other books I published are now profit. You they follow me? Because it is now the waste. And I publish that thing on top of my table. I can publish only 20 books and go and preach. I can publish 50 copies and go and preach. That guy gave me that knowledge. I improved on it. And it has given me wealth. Now, what do you know? When your mate no know, now make him money, enter your pocket, and I make and call your guy. So you you're always moving like this. And this rap music will kill you. <laughs> because where you are supposed to put knowledge, that's where rap music occupies. And when a bottle is full, they did, they did research in America, found out that black people were failing mathematics because they were occupying the portion of the brain that they used to know mathematics. You must have knowledge that brings respect. Knowledge that brings respect. I don't have the physique that is very astonishing. I don't look like the voice that comes out of me. The container of the knowledge I have is not appealing. It might even look like counterfeit. But when the content comes out of me, people respect me. Kings should bow at your knowledge. Unbelievers should be astonished. An Igbe woman, this old woman, Igbe woman, this water, came to the studio as I was talking. Entered bike, came to the studio to meet me. So I was listening to you on radio, and I said I want to meet this man. The day I talked about mysticism, Amok people were calling me, um, Freemasonry were calling me. Throughout yesterday, I was studying Freemasonry and Illuminati. I was browsing their history, where Illuminati started from in Bavaria. Most of those claiming to be Illuminati now are counterfeit, you know. Such that when I talk to somebody who is Freemasonry, who is practicing Freemasonry, I know about him 
and I can astonish him. If you don't shock your generation, your generation will shock you. Let's stand up to pray. Listen and listen well. What? Um, I said something. Okay. Impact. That's all we're talking about. I want you to live here with a desire because your head is higher than the rest of your body. That you will stuff this place. You will acquire skills. You will acquire knowledge. You will acquire expertise. You will acquire excellence that your mates will not see your back. Open your mouth and talk to God. How many books have you read this year? How many seminars have you attended this year? How many conferences have you attended this year? You are increasing the workload on your pastors. Somebody wrote in Dangote's book, so many youngsters nowadays believe that the possession of chains of university degrees will guarantee themselves success in life. It's a, it's a lie. They say it is the ability to bring out hidden knowledge that will lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Please listen to this. It will surprise you. Imam Ali, the founder of the Shiite groups, El Zazaki group, he lived from 599 to 663 before the, the I mean, in the, of the Christian era. He wrote in his book that knowledge is power and it can command obedience. A man of knowledge during his lifetime can make people obey him and follow him. And he is praised and venerated after his death. Remember that knowledge is a ruler and wealth is his subject. A Muslim wrote this more than 1,500 years ago. He knew the power of knowledge. No wonder the first university, the oldest continuously degree awarding university was established by two Muslim women, Fatima and her sister. Sir, the first, the oldest continuous degree awarding university was founded by two sisters in Fez, Morocco. It is still there. It has a green roof. Knowledge. Knowledge. Let me ask you one thing. I want to talk to you. Have you ever considered how much money black women spend in trying to become like white people? 250,000 on the head. <laughs> Which is a three bedroom bungalow. Cement. <laughs> Even the shoes you wear. Leg no depend on I was seeing my daughter's own. The, the, my granddaughter said, Mommy, you didn't wear your cocoa shoe. <laughs> I better make table. God bless you. 